Let's start in Gaza, where the Israeli military has confirmed that six bodies found in a tunnel in the city of Rafah were those of hostages held by Hamas after the October the 7th attack. It's named them as Israelis Alexander Lobanov, Almog Sarusi, Eden Yerushalmi, Ori Danino, Carmel Gat, and Hirsch Goldberg Polin, who was an American citizen. He had appeared in a Hamas video with an amputated arm a few months ago. In a statement, President Biden called his death tragic and reprehensible, saying Hamas leaders will pay for their crimes. The Missing Families Forum has again urged Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to agree to a ceasefire for the release of the remaining hostages. Elsewhere, three Israelis have died after their vehicle was fired on near the city of Hebron in the occupied West Bank. Well, with me now is Mohammed Taha from BBC Arabic. Uh, Mohammed, let's start first of all with the news of the bodies of six hostages that have been found. What more do we know about the operation in order to be able to find them and recover those bodies? So the operation was to secure just a tunnel where the Israeli forces found an alive uh, hostage last week, Al Qadi, a Bedouin uh, hostage. So the Israeli forces uh, was just trying to clear the tunnel and they found the bodies there. So they didn't go there upon uh, an intelligence information or something. They just found them uh, while they are searching the tunnel. So the circumstances around the killing, so uh, uh, the Israeli, uh, there is exchange of, uh, of accusations. The Israeli army saying that Hamas kill, killed them intentionally and uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu just issued uh, a, a statement a few minutes ago saying that we will continue to free all hostages and Israel will not uh, rest until we reach the killers means, you know, he's in, in, in inciting that the military operation in Gaza would continue. But Hamas issued also a statement and they said uh, that uh, they were killed in an Israeli shelling and they said that what they described as, uh, as practicing genocide in Gaza and the support of President Biden to Israel, as they said, is the cause of the death of these hostages. So there is this exchange of accusation between two parties. And how much does this add pressure onto the Prime Minister? We heard the, uh, the comment from the Hostages Families Forum. They've also said that uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu should take responsibility for abandoning the hostages. Indeed. Today is a big day for Israel. In Israel, as the, is, is Sunday, and everybody came from the Sabbath. We saw in the evening, last uh, evening, a big demonstration uh, asking uh, the uh, Prime Minister is Netanyahu to strike a deal. There is a call by the uh, 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 families of the uh, hostages to, for a general strike in, in, in Israel. Uh, there is already strike in the secondary school. They're, it's supposed to start today and it did not uh, start. And they are calling the, uh, the labor uh, um, syndicates or unions to call for a, a wide strike to try and make this moment where they found the bodies of these hostages a turning point to try to convince the Israeli government to uh, do some action. The Israeli prime minister cancelled the annual uh, the, sorry, the weekly meeting of the Israeli government that's happening every Sunday mo morning. He cancelled this meeting and there will be a meeting on 4 p.m. local time uh, to, uh, to address the issue. This meeting was called by the Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, who is already was vocal about his uh, disagreement with uh, the Prime Minister, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on his approach of insisting of having uh, uh, permanent presence, permanent military presence of the Israeli forces uh, in Gaza. So the situation now uh, in, in, in the Israeli uh, um, territories is really in, in high tension. And as you mentioned, there is also a tension in the West Bank and in Gaza. Well, Mohammed, stay with us. We'll come back to you in a moment. But let's now go live to Jerusalem and to our Middle East correspondent, John Donison. John, we were talking there about the divisions in Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet. How much does this latest development add to that? Well, I think Mohammed's right. It reflects the divisions within the government, but also the divisions within Israeli 
uh, society. Benjamin Netanyahu, in his short statement this morning, said uh, those who kill hostages do not want a deal, referring to the allegation from the Israeli military that these hostages were brutally murdered, in their words, by Hamas shortly before the bodies were found. You have to remember, though, that back in November last year, we had a ceasefire, a temporary ceasefire, where hostages were being exchanged for Palestinian prisoners every day. That went on for about a week with roughly 10 hostages a day coming out. And a lot of questions being asked about why didn't Israel continue with that process for a longer period and then some of those who we now know have died uh, might have been freed. The, certainly the hostage uh, families forum saying today that the people whose bodies have been found today would have been alive today if a hostage deal could have been done. And uh, we have heard reports, haven't we, of uh, Mr Netanyahu's defence minister uh, disagreeing with him as well and, and accusing him of putting his emphasis on uh, deploying IDF in the Philadelphia corridor over the hostages. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, the last time the security cabinet met earlier this week, uh, there are reports of a shouting match between Yoav Gallant and Prime Minister Netanyahu. Yoav Gallant saying that this insistence on in leaving Israeli forces in the Philadelphia corridor, that's the border area between Gaza and Egypt, was blocking a deal. That is something that Mr Netanyahu has insisted uh, he is going to pursue and, and continue with. You have to remember that within his gov government there are also more hardline elements who want Israel to be doing more militarily and have said they will resign from the government, bringing the government down if a ceasefire deal is done. And I'm talking about uh, Itamar Ben Gavir, the uh, hardline national security minister, and all, also the finance minister, Mr. Smotrich, who have said they will pull out of the government. So. He is torn, Mr Netanyahu, as he has been now for months, of trying to keep his government together, but also the pressure building for a ceasefire deal, not just from diplomats, but also from Israeli citizens, and in particular those hostage families. And John, we have also been hearing about three Israelis who've been killed after their vehicle was fired on uh, near the city of Hebron. What's the latest on that? Yes, well, you'll be aware, looks to me, that for the past four or five days there have been intensified Israeli military operations in the north of the West Bank targeting uh, Palestinian militants. At least 20 people have been killed in those raids and strikes on Palestinian cities. And Israel says it's trying to protect its citizens from attacks. Well, in the south of the West Bank, Bank near Hebron, which is the biggest Palestinian city in the occupied West Bank, three Israeli police officers were killed in a shooting attack overnight on their car. Uh, and uh, we've not got the details of their names yet, but certainly that is a, another dangerous development in the West Bank, which the warning is that there could be a war in the West Bank similar to what we've happened has been happening in Gaza for the past 10 or 11 months. John, thank you. That's our Middle East correspondent, John Donison, live in Jerusalem for us.